بسم الله والحمد لله حمد قدير طيب مبارك فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما قديرا أن بعد يا أيها الناس as we come to a benefit إن شاء الله تعالى the title that I want to title it is حفظ لسان وماذا حف نعم حفظ لسان or preserving the tongue. As we want to mention the hadith in regards to this affair, I narrated an Abi Hurara radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fayalqulu al-khayr awli yasmut. So we want to take this portion of this hadith bi izanillahi ta'ala as Abu Hurara radiallahu anhu reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, that he should say that which is good or remain silent. And whoever, na'an, and this is uh, collected in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So we want to mention some benefits in regards to preserving one's tongue. Because if the person doesn't preserve or take hold of his tongue, then this would be held against him then he will be accountable for that which he says as the shaykh hafidahallahu ta'ala he explains this hadith the shaykh fawzan may allah preserve him he mentions hafidahallah he says this is essential this 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 is the essence of mentioning the belief in the last day with belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, the pillars of Iman are six, as it is known, the last of which is the belief in the resurrection. But however, he mentioned it with belief in, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to emphasize it. And because if the individual truly believes that he will certainly be raised and made to account and be rewarded, he will pay attention and get ready and establish the other pillars of Islam along with other obligations and abstain from the prohibitions. He says, Hafidahallah ta'ala فَلْيَقُلُ الْخَيْرِ أَوْ لِيَسْمُدْ فَإِنَّ مِنْ إِمَانَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَاسْتَعْدِ اللَّهُ أن يقول عبد عبد الخير أو يسمت فقد خلق الله سبحانه وتعالى هذا لسانة في هذا إنسان وعلمه وعلمه نطق نطق وماذا وبين نعمة وبين نعمة من سبحانه وتعالى so he mentions, he says in regards to this, this hadith, he should say that which is good or remain silent. Since part of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day and preparation for it is that the servant says that what is good or he remains silent. Allah Jalla has created this tongue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has يعني, created this tongue. فَقَدْ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى هَذَا اللِّسَانَ فِي هَذَا فِي هَذَا الْإِنْسَانِ وَعَلَّمَ وَعَلَّمَهُ that he has created this tongue in this individual and taught him speech and clarity as a mercy for him سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى glorious is he and exalted is he he has not made him from the stiff things that do not speak or from the beast or the deaf and dumb who has impaired speech. Allah Azza wa Jalla rather, he has favored him with speech in the tongue. He has favored the person, Allah Akbar, with speech in the tongue. And this tongue is a sword with two sharp ends. If you employ it for good, it brings about good for you. But if you employ it for evil, it brings evil and sin upon you. That depends on what you utter with it.
because of the significance of speech. Allah Azza wa Jalla has assigned two angels on the right and the left. Two the angels on the right side and the left side of the human being. They are regularly with him, writing what he says, as Allah mentions, Ma yalfidu min qawlin illa nadayhi raqibun ajeed. Not a word does he or she utters, but there is a watcher by him ready to record. So they are both taking records. They are both recording of whatever he says, whether it is in obedience or disobedience, and even regarding the ordinary permissible things. So this verse is general and telling everything the servant says. So the utterance that you make are written and recorded for you. If they are good, it brings about good and benefit for you. But if it is, but if it is evil, it causes evil and punishment. It follows that. It follows that the most dangerous of what is in the man is his tongue. Wa billah, as a messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He mentions people will be upside down on their faces. Or he said, on their nostrils and the hellfire, except by the yields of their tongue. Except by that which they, the yields of their tongue. Except by the hail or the yields of their tongue. He should say that which is good. That the person, he should say that which is good. So this is an imperative for the person to be mindful of that which he say. As Allah, he mentions. And utter always that which is good. Say that which is good. So he mentions Hafidah Allah. Good utterance is such as the tasbih. Good, good utterance is that the person he says, the subhanallah, and that he says, La ilaha illallah, and that the person he says, Allahu Akbar. Oh, as it is mentioned, the Shaykh Hafidah Allah Ta'ala, he says, except that the person he utters these good words, the kalimatul tayyib, good utterance such as the tasbih, that the person he mentions, the subhanallah, and that he says, the madha tahleel, he says, La ilaha illallah wa tak in the takbir, saying Allahu Akbar, the recitation of the Quran, the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the ordering the good and forbidden evil, acquiring beneficial knowledge and reclining between people. Yani reconciling, Afan, reconciling, re reconciling between people. And every utterance Allah Azza wa Jalla is pleased with. He is pleased with it, that which is good. Making islah between the people, Afan, Naam. Then he mentions the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, there is no good in most of their secret talks except in him who orders the charity or all good and righteous deeds which Allah has ordained or conciliation between mankind, making reconciliation between mankind. And he who utters this, seeking the good and the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla, we shall give him a great reward. So this affair of preserving one's tongue it is something that is praiseworthy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is something that is most beloved to Allah azza wa jalla 
This brings about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uttering foul speech and backbiting and slandering individuals. It brings about the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Speech does not require so much. It is not as the prayer or fasting or like that or like yani jihad. You can say what is good while seated or reclining or riding or while walking, but the body gets tired from acts of obedience. As for the tongue, it does not get tired from speech. So get it busy with benefits. Get the tongue used, used to saying that which is good. Get the tongue used to benefiting, whether you benefit in yourself or you benefit in mankind. So the Shaykh Hafidahullah, he mentions, قَوْلُهُ أَوْ لِيَسْمُتْ إِذَا إِذَا لَمْ يَقُولُ الْخَيْرِ فَإِنَّهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَسْمُتْ مِنْ أَجْلٍ أَنْ مِنْ أَجْلٍ من أجل أن يسلم. He says, or he remains silent. If he does not speak good, he should remain silent to be safe. Neither to be safe, to be safe. Oh, ليسموت من أجل أن يسلم. So he should be quiet to remain to to be safe, to be on the safe side. You don't know about situations and affairs. Someone can't call. Someone neither calls you to say something about individuals or to speak about a particular matter it is upon you to remain silent and that is to be safe so that you won't harm individuals and also mainly harm yourself so he mentions and when he remains silent he's actually safe when he speaks and it is good, he gains. But if he is, but if it is evil, he gets destroyed. And most of what the individual utters, especially due to nonchalantness, or the person is nonchalant, or the person he is weak in iman, his evil, his evil speech is from the aspects of assets utterance, bereft of any benefit. So that which the individual is destroyed with is yani assess utterance continue speaking about situations or affairs that is no benefit and constant constantly yani all of the time this person is engulfed in this affair the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna allah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited you three things inna allah is that the person he says yani three things hearsay waste and wealth and much question much matter questioning much question much questioning this 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 uh, is in regards to much talking as well this is in regards to a lot of talking. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has prohibited the person from three matters, hearsays, and wasting wealth, and a lot of questioning. So Allah has prohibited the Muslim of getting busy with this, of so-and-so said, and so-and-so said, so-and-so said, yani, such and such. Such a person will gather the statement of people and get so busy with them and other evil speeches like this. Nothing in like backbiting and slandering and cursing and falsehood and perjury. And the worst of them all, joining partners with Allah Azza wa Jalla. Such as supplicating to other than Allah or seeking help from other than Allah or other prohibited utterances. So we see that from this affair of the bad speech, it leads you to doing other things. It leads you to saying more impermissible things. It leads you to carry on and going further and further and further. So all of that which, or all of that would be recorded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the servant. It will be written in his record. And he will be asked about them on a day of resurrection. So the Muslim, so the Muslim he should preserve his tongue 
from that which is bereft of any benefit, from that which is no benefit. That the person, he preserve his tongue from that which is no benefit or unnecessary so that he rest and leaves the people to rest. So the Shaykh, he mentions, or remain silent. That the person, he remains quiet because there is tranquility and safety and remain silent. Because there is tranquility and safety and remain silent. If you utter an evil word, فَإِذَا تَكَلَّمْتَ فَإِذَا كِتَكَلَّمْ تَكَلَّمْتَ بِكَلَامِ الْسَيِّئِ So if the person utters an evil word, you will not be able to rectify and disapprove it. But because you speak, you are in control of your tongue. As such remaining silent is better than making blameworthy statements. Statements that you, you may have to retract or you may have to take back. So to prevent all of this, it is better to be quiet. Individual will come to you with news or false information. And you know, they try to get you to, to respond or try to get you involved. You know, being quiet. Have a najah. This is safety. Or rahmah. And it is a mercy. So always make this rule a part of you. If you want to say anything, consider the speech. If it contains good, you should say it. But if it is, Yani, if it contains evil, then withhold your tongue from it so that you are saved. So this was the end of the Sheikh speech pertaining to the tongue. So al hifdul lisan, preserving one's tongue from backbiting. Preserving one's tongue from slandering, preserving one's tongue from all of these affairs. Have a najah, wa have a rahma. This is safety and this is a mercy. So, this is what we want to benefit with. Bi idhnillahi ta'ala, wa subhanaka lahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilayt, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.